Hi friends, hope you are fine. In this video, let us discuss scientific method with a simple tomato plant experiment. So we'll be discussing all the steps involved in scientific method, then detailed discussion about hypothesis, how to conduct an experiment, what's the difference between treatment control, how to collect and analyze data, and a walkthrough through all processes of the scientific method with a simple example. Let's begin. A scientific method starts with observation. I was walking through my vegetable garden and found out that some of the tomato plants are very healthy with many fruits. On the other side, some of the plants are not healthy without or with less number of fruits. So this is what I see. Now to make it into an observation, I need to have a close look. A closer look of the phenomenon is called as observation. It should be correct and it should be repeatable also. So I am going to have a close look of these tomato plants. The next thing will be, I will be asking questions. What is the reason? What about the sunlight? And I found out that all the plants are getting almost same amount of sunlight. There is no shade on the top of these plants. Then I checked for any infestation or any plant diseases and found out that leaves are okay, fine, even in plants without fruits. Then I checked the soil and I found out that there is enough moisture in this part where the plant is growing very well with fruits. And here the moisture content is less, the soil is dry. I thought that water might be the reason for this poor growth of this plant. So I'll be asking questions. And from this, I need to frame a hypothesis. Hypothesis is an educated guess or a possible answer that can be scientifically testable. So it is based on my experience, my observation and also my experience. After that, I will be having a review of literature. A review of literature is a detailed study on the selected topic from authentic resources like research articles like this. So I went through many research articles regarding the effect of water on the growth of tomato plant. On that basis, I framed a hypothesis. And this is a hypothesis. As I mentioned, hypothesis is an educated guess, a possible answer, a predictive statement that can be scientifically testable. There are two types of hypothesis. First one is null hypothesis and the second one is alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis is the hypothesis that the researcher tries to disprove or it is the hypothesis that states that there is no statistical significance between the variables selected. So we'll be discussing that later. So first of all, a researcher starts with null hypothesis. So null hypothesis as the word indicates it is a hypothesis that the researcher tries to nullify or it is a negative statement. Less water is not the reason for less number of fruits in the case of these plants. In research, while framing hypothesis, we begin with null hypothesis as it helps to avoid false positives. It helps the researcher to avoid the bias towards the preferred outcome. After my observation, I thought that water might be the reason. So that bias can be avoided by, by framing this null hypothesis and can objectively evaluate based on the evidence whether my reasoning is true or false. So we have framed a null hypothesis. Step two is we need to test this null hypothesis by conducting an experiment. To design an experiment, first we need to design which are the variables that is to be selected for these experiments. So variable is any change or a factor that is changing in an experiment that can be measured or quantified. One of the variable is the independent variable. Independent variable is the variable that the researcher changes in an experiment. Let me repeat. Independent variable is the variable that the researcher changes in an experiment. Here, as we know, we'll be changing the amount of water so that we need to find out whether water is having some effect on the growth of these plants. Then there is dependent variable. Dependent variable, as the term suggests, it is a variable that is dependent on the change in the independent variable. So if we change this independent variable or amount of water, many factors will be changing as a result of change in this independent variable, like number of fruits, number of leaves, stem length, root length, etc. 
So the variables that is affected by the change in independent variable is called as the dependent variable. Hope you are clear. Then the third variable is the control variable. So we are conducting experiment. We are changing independent variable and we will be measuring the changes that is happening in dependent variable. Fine. So there are many other variables that is involved in this experiment that should be controlled, that should be kept constant throughout the experiment, like amount of light, temperature, amount of other fertilizers that is to be added to all experimental setup or all treatments. So that should be controlled and that should be in equal amounts. And all the variables that is kept constant is called the controlled variable. Hope you are clear. So let me summarize these variables. So for designing an experiment, first we need to select the variables. So independent variable is the variable that the researcher changes. In this experiment, we are changing the quantity of water that is to be given to different treatments. Then dependent variable is the variable that is affected by the change in independent variable. So here we'll be looking for number of fruits, number of leaves, etc. after the experiment. And finally, all other variables like amount of light, temperature, etc. that should be kept constant throughout the experiment that makes the controlled variable. So we have decided the variables. Independent variable is the amount of water and dependent variable number of fruits and number of leaves should be measured or quantified. Now we need to conduct an experiment. So we need to decide the treatments. So first we need a control. Control is the experimental group in which we are not conducting the experiment where we are not changing the independent variable. In control, we'll be using minimum water that is as per the research data. 1.5 liters per day is required. We'll be watering it in two intervals. So that is the control. Then in the treatments, we'll be having three treatments in order to find out whether the effect of water actually increases the growth of the plant. In the first treatment, we'll be watering 2 liter per day in two intervals. In the second treatment, 3 liter per day in two intervals. And in the third treatment, 4 liter per day in two intervals. Now we'll be repeating the same in triplicates, minimum of triplicate for validating the results. So treatment 2 is also replicated twice, maybe 25 seeds. So in greenhouse, we'll be triplicating these maybe in trays or under a control condition. The same thing happens with the treatment 3 also. So the variety we selected normally takes 60 days to fruit or ripen. Normally tomato takes 80 to 100 days. So this variety, suppose it is 60 days. The dependent variables that we are going to measure is the number of fruits and number of leaves after conducting this experiment. The next step is we need to collect data. So we need to have a close observation from the day one onwards. If there is any error, any diseases or something like that. Suppose this is the data, number of leaves and number of fruits here. You can have control T1, T2 and T3. These are the treatments. Suppose day 20 control, the number of leaves is 2, T1, treatment 1, 3, treatment 2, 3, treatment 3, 4, like that. So this is the data at the day 30. Then we have day 50. And finally, we have day 60. At day 60, suppose number of leaves in control is 40, whereas number of fruits is 10. In treatment 1, it is 45, where water is given 2 liters. Then in treatment 2, where water is given 3 liters, it is 50 leaves and 20 fruits. Whereas in T3, suppose this is 55 leaves and 25 fruits. We'll be taking the average as we have done in triplicates. So this is a simple model uh, to understand how this scientific method works. Now we need to analyze the data. What is the trend? So we prepared, we will be using statistics, we will be using different softwares or tools to summarize the data. So we'll be preparing a graph. So from the graph, it is quite evident that as the water, amount of water increases, the number of fruits or number of leaves, the vegetative growth is also increasing. So we have analyzed the data, we have summarized the data. Finally, we need to repeat the experiment before conclusion. And finally, we'll be reaching a conclusion whether our reasoning or hypothesis is true or not. So we have stated the null hypothesis, that is less water is not the reason for less number of fruits. So from this experiment, from this graph, we know that this is not happening. Less water 
is the reason for less number of roots. So null hypothesis is false. So we need to accept the alternative hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis is the hypothesis that the researcher tries to prove. So our reasoning is true. In other terms, if null hypothesis is accepted, then our reasoning is false. We need to modify the hypothesis. If null hypothesis is rejected, our reasoning is true. We'll be selecting the alternative hypothesis. So alternative hypothesis will be less water is a reason for less number of roots. So alternative hypothesis is found to be true. Null hypothesis is false and alternative hypothesis is accepted. And finally, we need to report this result or publish the result in research purpose like this after repeating experiment many times to avoid any error. And we'll be publishing this data to the public like this effect of water on, uh, suppose effect of water on fruiting of tomato like this. So we have published the data and make it available to the public by publishing the data in some research journals. So this is how scientific method works. Now let me define scientific method. So it is an organized method. As we see, there is a sequential procedure and systematic method to gain knowledge that uses primarily starting with observation followed by experimentation to describe and explain nature or natural phenomenon. Hope you are clear. So let me summarize. Scientific method starts with observation. Observation should be correct and repeatable. On the basis of observation, we'll be asking questions. Next, we'll be framing a hypothesis. Hypothesis is an educated guess that can be tested by scientific methods. And this is based on our experience and also review of literature. Then we'll be formulating a null hypothesis, the hypothesis that we are trying to nullify to avoid the bias towards our preferred outcome, followed by conducting experiment to test the hypothesis. Variables are decided here, which is an independent variable, which is a dependent variable, and which are the control variables. Then we'll be conducting experiments, collecting data, analyzing data, and finally making a conclusion whether our hypothesis, null hypothesis, is accepted or rejected. On the basis, if the null hypothesis is accepted, that means our reasoning is false or alternative hypothesis is false. We need to modify the hypothesis. Maybe some other factor is affecting like sunlight. So we need to conduct the experiment again by modifying the hypothesis. If null hypothesis is false, that, that means our alternative hypothesis is accepted. We can further confirm it by further experiments, then report result, publish the result in some scientific journals so that it is available to the public. So this is how scientific method works. Hope you are benefited from this video. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.